Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a family tree with Divi's transform settings. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so before we begin, I'd like to let you know that uh, you can actually download this family tree if you go to the link which I'll provide to in the show notes below. So all you need to do is to enter your email address and you'll be able to download this layout. But in this tutorial, I'll be showing you exactly how to build it. All right, so let's get started by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here to pages and click on add new. So we need to give a page a name. We can, all, we can name this whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call this family tree, click on use Divi builder. And then we're gonna go straight to the uh, builder by building from scratch. All right, so what we're going to need here is a single column. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then I'm going to close this for now because what we need to do is to set our padding for our section before we begin. All right, so what we're going to do now is to go to my section settings, click on design, and then I'm going to come over here to spacing. So our top padding needs to be set to 8VW. So I'm going to come over here. Now we need to apply the same to the bottom. So I'm going to activate this chain. Now we need to go into our row settings. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to come over here, click on this gear icon to go into my row settings. All right. So what we need to do here is we need to go in and set our gutter width and our maximum width. So I'm going to click here on design sizing. So for our gutter width, I'm going to activate it first and then drag the slider all the way down to one. And then also need to add my width, set this to 100%. I'm just going to copy this because my max width also needs to be set to 100%. Next, I need to add my top and bottom padding. So I'm just going to scroll down here, click on spacing. So for my top and bottom padding, I'm going to set this to zero. And for my left and right, I'm going to set this to 15 VW. So I'm going to activate my chain so my value can be applied to both sides. Now it's time to add our image module. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come over here and click this plus button. Search for my image module and select it. I'm going to click this plus button. Now the best size for this is 180 pixels. So uh, make sure that you use a square as well. So I'm just going to go through my library here and uh, find the right image that will work with this. So I'm going to select my image here, click upload an image. Now I'm just going to make sure that my alignment is set to centered. So I'm going to click here on design alignment and then make sure that this is centered. Now, the next thing we need to do is to come over here to sizing. So this is where you can adjust the actual size of this image by using the width. So here we're going to set this to 49%. And the module alignment needs to be centered as well. Now we're going to go to borders because right now we have it as a square, but we want to add rounded uh, to make this a circle. So we're going to come all the way down here to border and set this at 20VW. So you can see now, as soon as I've entered 20VW, this has applied rounded corners and this has given us this circle shape. Right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a text module. So I'm gonna save this for now. Click here on this plus button, search for my text module. I'm gonna select it. And here we just need to give this lady a name. So we're gonna call her Jane. Now let's customize our text. So the first thing we're gonna do before we do that is to come over here to background and set our background to white. Now we can go into text. So here we need to uh, set our font to open sans. So I'm just going to click here on default, change this to open sans. And then I'm also going to set my text color to black and also set my text size. So for the text size, I'm going to set this to 0.8 VW. And then for the line height, I'm going to set this to 0.4. And then finally, text orientation needs to be set to centered so that we can have our name right below this image. Now let's go to our spacing and add our margins. So I'm gonna scroll down here until I get to spacing. So we're gonna start off with a top margin of minus 0.5. For our left and right margin, I'm gonna set this to 1VW. So I'm gonna activate the chain. For my top and bottom padding, we're gonna set this to 2VW. So I'm gonna activate my chain here. Now it's time to add our border. So I'm gonna come over here to border and select the top uh, border. So I'm gonna select this tab here. And then on the bottom, we need to set this to five pixels. Right, so we're not done yet because we need to add our color here. So I'm gonna add my color and that needs to be black. Now let's head over to our box shadow uh, settings. So I'm gonna click here on box shadow. And this is the option that we're gonna go with. And we're gonna start with a vertical position of 10 pixels. So I'm gonna add it here. And the blur strength, this is a bit too, uh, it's a bit too much. So we can lower it here by adding 50 pixels. 
and then we're going to go in and add our shadow color. Now, if you want to use the exact same settings as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so here on box shadow, I'm just going to click on this eyedropper tool and paste my values between the brackets, just like that. So now we have uh, this shadow a bit subtle. So next we need to add our Z index. So I'm going to come over here to advanced visibility, and then I'm going to set my Z index to two. So I'm going to save this. And then the next stage is to clone this row three times. So I'm just going to click on the clone button here. One, two, three. So this is what we have so far. So what we need to do now is to start adding our levels to our family tree. So in order for us to be able to add and uh, add all our clones, it's much easier if you work in the um, wireframe mode. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to come over here, click on expand settings, and then select my wireframe mode. So we are going to start here with, in fact, you know what? It might be a good idea to label this rows to just say row one, row two, row three. Okay, so what we need to do here in row one is to duplicate this image and the text seven times each. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the same to the text. So the next thing we need to do now is to add some CSS code so that all these modules are shown in a grid. So let me just show you quickly what it looks like right now. So as you can see, it's each image below um, one another. But now if we go in and add our CSS code, it's going to show it as a grid. And also this CSS code that I'm going to add in here, it can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so I'm going to click here on the gear icon for my row settings. And then I'm going to come to the column settings and then click on advanced. Click custom CSS. And then in the main element, I'm just going to paste my CSS code just like that. Now, let me just show you quickly what it looks like here on the uh, desktop view. Now we can see we've just created a grid and all our images are showing like that, so which is fantastic. All right, so now let's move on to uh, cu and customize uh, row number two. So I'm just going to save this. In fact, let me go back to my wireframe mode and save this. Right, so for row two, I'm just going to scroll down here, and this is why it's also a good idea to come in here and label these. All right, so anyway, what we need to do here is to clone these modules three times, and then over here on the text one as well. And we also have a CSS code to add. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings, click on my gear icon to go into my column, advanced, custom CSS, and then I'm gonna paste my CSS code in here. I'm gonna take a quick look here to make sure everything is looking great. And it is looking great. I'm gonna save this. Now let's move on to our next section. So here, all we need to do is to clone this once, and the text also once. And then we need also need to add our CSS code to show our grid. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, go into my column settings, click on advanced, custom CSS, and then I'm going to paste my CSS code in here. All right, so we're going to save this. So if you've done it correctly, let me show you what it needs to look like. So this is how it needs to look like. Great. So what we're going to do now is to go into row four and make some customizations. So again, I'm going to go back to my wireframe mode and then click on this gear icon. All right. So here we need to start with the top padding. So I'm going to come over here and click on spacing. So our top padding is zero pixels and left and right needs to be set to 31. So the next stage now is to connect our family trees with some images. All right. So to do that, we are going to add a brand new row. So I'm just going to click this plus button. And in that row, we're going to add a single column, just like that. So before we add in the modules, let's go into the row settings and just make sure that uh, we set this to 100%. So I'm going to click here on design, sizing. We're going to make sure that our width is set to 100%. And also our max width is set to 100%. Now let's go to spacing. So I'm going to scroll down here because this is where we need to add our top and bottom padding. And we're going to set this to zero. Activate my chain. And also for the left and right, I'm going to set this to 15 VW. Activate my chain. And now it's time to add my image module. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come over here, click this plus button. Search for my image module. I'm going to select it. Click this plus button. And we're going to go with this image right here. Click upload an image. 
So now my image has been added and let me just show you what it looks like on the front view. So we can see here that this is what's going to connect these images. But we're not done yet because we need to make sure that we connect these correctly. So first of all, we're going to come over here to design, click on sizing because we want to force this image to go full width. So I'm going to say force full width. And then over here on spacing, you just want to make sure that uh, show space below image is set to no. And then we're going to clone this twice to say and uh, change their position. So I'm going to save this. So what we need to clone here, and this is where you need to be very, very careful, we need to clone the actual row, not the um, image itself. So right now, as you can see, my row is what's uh, selected. In fact, um, what may be a good idea now is to go in and label this row in our wireframe mode. Okay, so let me just find it, and it's this one right here that I've just added. So I'm just going to call this connectors. Okay, so we need to duplicate this twice. And then we need to drag this into position. So I'm just going to drag the first one here. Drag it like that. Find the second one. Drag it all the way here. So this one here needs to be between row three and row four. Okay, so this is row four. It's got a connector. Then that's row three. It also has a connector right there. And then between row two and row one, we also have a connector. Now, if you're not sure what it looks like, you can just come over here to the uh, desktop view. And then you can see now that everything is connected. So now what we need to do is to add our connectors. So this image here needs to be cloned three times. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and now I need to go in and add my CSS code. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on my settings, advanced, custom CSS, and then I'm going to paste my CSS code in here. And as you can see, I've just uh, added my connectors here in a grid. I want to save this and then save once again. Now we need to come over here and do the same. So I'm going to duplicate this image. And then I'm going to go into the row settings click on this gear icon, advanced, custom CSS, and then I'm going to paste my CSS code like that. And as you can see, everything is now connecting correctly. So I'm going to save this for now and then save this one more time. Now, here's the thing. So let's say you want to go in now and add the family members. That's quite straightforward because you can just pick whatever level it is. Uh, first of all, you want to go and change the image. So I'm going to click here on um, image settings, and then I'm just going to change this to, let's say, a guy. Click upload an image. And then for the name here, in fact, let me first save this. And then over here, we can also change the name. So I'm going to go into my module settings and change this name to John. Click here on design, border. So here on the border, we can also change the color of the border. So I'm going to click the second tab to activate my border. And we're just going to change this to orange and then save. So you can actually go through this family tree, change the names, change the images, until you're happy with what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to click here on Publish, and then we're going to take a look at the final preview. Right, so I'm going to exit the Visual Builder, and this is our final design. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.